Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, the show where you give us your questions and we give you answers. And this is the first one of 2020, so we're so excited to get back into it. And we've got a great question coming up to kick off the year. Yes, we have, and we'll need plenty more of those to see us through the rest of this futuristic new decade that we are in. So anything that you want to know, just ask. Give us a call on 013-808-0035. That's 013-808-0035. Or head over to propertyhub.com net slash ask so while you're pondering what you'd like to find out let's have a listen to today's question hi rob and rob thanks for your great podcast and great content i'm um, pleased to say that off the back of your inspiration and help it's given me confidence to make my first investment at the start of the year however from that investment i have a little bit of cash left over and i'm looking for alternative investments outside of property i've been looking at uh, shares and share prices and i've noticed that some of the building development companies some of the larger ones in particular that i initially looked at Historically, their share price has not exactly mirrored, but followed very closely the 18-year property cycle. So my question is, is this something that could be used to an investor's advantage in terms of potentially buying at the point of the mid-cycle wobble or at the point of the next crash, try and make a good investment, basically? Any help would be fantastic. Well, new decade and a completely new type of question. We've not had one like this before, Rob. But luckily, it's one we can answer. So I think this is really interesting because this is something that I actually do. I have invested in some home builders, major home builders, home builders that you would recognize if I was to name them right now. The only reason I'm not going to is because I don't want you to just follow blindly in what I've invested in. But what I can do instead is give you some advice. So yes, I do believe there is an opportunity to follow the 18-year property cycle by purchasing shares in these companies. You could do this through a pension, so it may be more tax efficient, or you could do it through a share ISA, or you could just buy the shares outright. It's up to you. Now, very recently, the shares in UK home builders have done very well, because once the election was announced and the market deemed that we have certainty again, that resulted in a nice leap for those who had invested in those companies. So have all the gains been realised? Well, no, not if you are investing for the long term. And like property, with my investments in the stock market, I invest for the long term. Now, I actually believe there may be a stock market correction or possibly even crash in the next 12 to 18 months. So will I be getting out and selling all all my investments? Well, no, I will still keep my money in because as I've said, it's a long term investment. I may reduce it slightly, but I will still keep holding. And that is for two reasons. One, as I've said already, it's long term. And the second reason is that these developers are propped up by a scheme called help to buy. Now, Help to Buy is a government scheme that allows people to purchase a home with only a 5% deposit down. So they get a great deal of assistance when purchasing one of these homes. Now, the new build developers have taken advantage of this massively. And some of these developers see over 50% of their sales through Help to Buy, which is huge. Effectively, Help to Buy is a grant for these home builders. And it has helped them do very well. Now, I don't think Help to Buy will be withdrawn anytime soon. Tory governments traditionally like to see people purchasing their own homes because homeowners traditionally tend to vote Tory. So as long as Help to Buy is in place, I will have some level of investment in these home builders. However, I believe, and it doesn't mean you should believe, that there will be some sort of correction or possibly crash in the next 18 months. So for full transparency, I probably will reduce my holdings shortly but I won't get rid of them completely. So it's an interesting question. It's an interesting time for shares. And it's also very interesting for property shares as well because of help to buy. And Rob, investing is a a complex subject like property investments. So it's not something that people should do lightly, or at least not in any big way if they don't understand what they're doing. Absolutely not. The nice thing about shares, though, as opposed to investing it directly in a property, is that you can have a play with £100 or less if you want to and test out some theories or even just have a bit of fun and treat it like a bit of a gamble. There's nothing wrong with that. A couple of things I think are interesting that you can do with the property developers 
is firstly, like our questioner said, you can use them to play on the cycle in the same way as you would buying residential property. You could potentially do it in ways that would be difficult with owning property directly. For example, when there is a huge crash, which we know there will be at some point, you might find it difficult to get a mortgage because lending has dried up. Not saying that will happen, but it did last time. In that situation, you could still go out and buy shares in property companies if you believe that there was blood on the street and you want to get exposure to property at rock bottom. The other thing about the house builders is they're sensitive to UK news to a far greater extent than the FTSE is as a whole. That's because many of the companies in the FTSE 100 make a large proportion of their earnings overseas. They just happen to be listed in the UK, whereas the UK house builders, virtually all of their profits come within the UK. Therefore, when there is either good news or bad news, you see that often the biggest jumps and the biggest falls are among the house builders. So that means if you've got a strong view on something that's going to happen, like the outcome of a budget or an election, or if you think that the reaction to recent news is overdone, you can take advantage of that by investing in those companies. Now, all of that, of course, is not for most people. There's a high probability that you'll be wrong and you'll lose money. And for most people, the best thing to do is just to drip feed over time consistently into a broad basket of everything. But those are just things that you can do if you want to. So there we are. We are done for our first question in 2020, but we're excited to answer more. So please do get your questions in. We're looking forward to the variety that you bring the show by all these wonderful and new questions even after 200 episodes we're still getting questions that we've never had before so thank you so much so we'll be back next tuesday with ask rob and rob but before then we'll be back on thursday with our predictions episode on the podcast where we'll be looking ahead to 2020 and possibly beyond and telling you how we think the year is going to play out so that is a must listen to so we'll see you then until then take care bye bye Bye-bye.